Hello and welcome to Video Jug. Making underwater videos is a fantastic way to record your experiences beneath the surface. The basics are the same as making topside videos, but there's a lot of things we take for granted on the surface that are big obstacles when shooting underwater. So here is part one of Video Jug's top tips for shooting underwater video. Tip one, perfect your scuba skills. Buoyancy control, or the ability to hover over, under, or by an object in the water, is the most vital skill that all divers must accomplish, videographers or not. The mastering of this skill cannot be overemphasized. It'll help with the most fundamental technique to creating watchable footage, image steadiness, and sharper pictures. It'll also ensure you avoid contact with delicate marine organisms. Remember, if you have to damage anything to take a shot, don't take it. No photo is worth the life of an aquatic plant or animal. At the beginning of every dive, refresh your buoyancy skills by practicing some exercises you learnt during your first certification course. Tip two, take proper care of your equipment. Proper maintenance of your underwater housing is of the utmost importance to avoid water damage to your camera. Floods are almost always caused by user error. So the first thing to do is check your manual for details on how to assemble your particular housing properly. You'll find the one thing that all housings have in common are the O-ring seals. These are rubber rings that compress under pressure to join the surfaces with a watertight seal. Always remember that it's not the housing that keeps out the water, it's the O-rings and you must pay extra special attention to them. Because they're fragile, care must be taken so as not to stretch or accidentally cut or tear them. Use a Q-tip to clean any stray hairs or dust from the O-ring groove. And make sure to periodically lubricate them with silicon grease. Rub a small blob of grease between the tip of your finger and your thumb. Then glide the O-ring slowly through your finger and thumb, being very careful not to leave too much grease on the O-ring. Most importantly, wash the outer housing after every use in fresh water. You mustn't let salt water dry on the joints of the controls and metal fittings. Tip three, be careful with color. As we dive deeper into the ocean, water absorbs the rays of sunlight that comprise color. As you descend, the warm hues of red, orange, and yellow are gradually lost until we get to about 60 feet, 18 meters, when pictures start to become just a monochromatic blue. Most underwater housings have an internal filter, while some use an external removable one. This red filter is for use at depths below around 15 feet or 5 meters. Above this, and the footage will look too red. Below it, and it will be excellent for bringing back many of the lost colors. Of course, if you use a filter, you'll need to pay extra special attention to our next tip. Tip four, watch the white balance. A camera's automatic white balance control operates in the same way as our brains. It assesses the dominant light source and boosts other colors in the video signal in order to compensate. Be aware that underwater, as you change your depth, you also change your lighting. So there's a significant improvement in manually white balancing. Always carry a white plastic slate with you underwater so that you can re-white balance as the conditions of your shooting change. Just remember that your white slate must cover 70% or more of your shot when you do this. Tip five, be familiar with filming techniques. Every video should tell a story with a beginning, a middle and an end. Even if it's just the story of your diving day. This is where you'll want to be familiar with different film techniques. Let's start with horizontal movement, panning, and vertical movement, tilting. Panning lets the viewer take in a wide expanse, whether it be underwater or above. Perhaps you want to convey the sheer size of a wreck, or maybe the splendor of a large coral reef. Tilting is used less often and can emphasize the relationship between the bottom and surface. 
The lead-in pan is often used to begin a scene and involves panning with a moving subject, coming to rest on a second subject, which is the important one, and allowing the first subject to disappear from shot. You should now be well on your way to improving your underwater movie making. But that's not all there is to it. Now go and watch part two of our top tips to learn more about underwater film techniques.